So this is this is kind of a big show for me. This is my one year anniversary performing with Humor You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been a good year. It has been the best second choice club I could have asked for. Uh, so my set tonight is, is kind of telling you how I got here. Uh, it all started it all started one day when I was walking into Wilk, and I accidentally walked a little too close to those booths they have, uh, and I got blindsided by two beautiful women. And they were like, hey, do you want to learn how to play Quidditch? And at that point in my life, I didn't know how flirting happened. But I was reasonably confident that wasn't it. Uh, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I was like, yes, yes, please, thank you very much. Uh, and that is how I ended up being the third string right wing chaser for the Provo Night Furies. Yeah, my actual jersey, uh, and I just want to point out that it's, it's Furies with one R, not two. Uh, that's a very different club. Uh, Quidditch, Quidditch is a fun, it's a fun sport. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of credit. Uh, I remember once I was up, I was up north in Salt Lake facing the U of U, and uh, right next door some LARPers set up shop. Uh, because apparently this corner of the park was the designated safe space for self-esteem. <laughs> and uh, my, my gut reaction was like, all right, Marvin, it's a little geeky for me, but you do you. And as I stood there straddling a PVC pipe, watching grown adults pretend to fly, I saw, I saw this kid in a helmet and a foam sword giving me the same look. <laughs> And that is the last time I ever pray for humility. <laughs> like, I, I really shouldn't be down on LARPers. Um, people should do what they enjoy. And like, what is LARPing but pretending to do the things you wish you could? Uh, which is like me every time I sport. Uh, you can tell how good I am at, at sporting because I called it sporting. Uh, like. Pretty much every basketball game with me is just me live-action role-playing as someone with coordination. <laughs> Which is interesting, uh, being from Indiana. Uh, in Indiana, basketball is just kind of what you do if you're not shucking corn. And, and uh, like, it's, it's really important to us culturally. Like, the first thing they do when you pop out the womb is they check how you handle the ball. The next thing they do is to check the gender. And that's, that's mostly just a technicality to see which team you're going to be on. So when I told my parents about my athletic choices, uh, I, I, I thought they would be proud of me. They both love sports, uh, so this was a step in the right direction for me. Uh, but I was like, I, I thought I was saying, look, parental units, I'm like you. I, I score points. I'm not a failure. I, I'm just like you, Dad. And my dad was like, no, son. I wanted you to score points, but not like this. <laughs> Do you get a juice box at the end after uh, from someone's mom? Uh, maybe maybe you could try being an adult, uh, or maybe a different sport, a more manly sport like uh, volleyball or ping pong. Uh, my mom, she always tries to be supportive, no matter how hard I make it for her, and she she's like, is this is this part of the Pokemon thing? <laughs> No, Mom, that's, that's my other interest that you're ashamed of. <laughs> uh, soon after joining the Quidditch team, uh, I, got a, I got a message from my recently ex-girlfriend, um, because apparently joining the Quidditch team ca counts as a call for help. <laughs> when, my, when my sisters found out, they were just kind of like, yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. Quidditch doesn't get a lot of respect, uh, and it's because people don't recognize it as a real sport. And that's because the things that make it so amazing in Harry Potter make it kind of uncomfortable for muggles. Uh, like I said, some people think having a three-foot pipe sticking out from between your legs looks a little awkward. Which I think is just a massive fallacy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's just for some of you, that's okay. Uh, the other thing is the snitch, uh, which is most of what we know from Harry Potter about Quidditch, it's just the snitch. 
Uh, and they tried everything to make the snitch work. Uh, they tried drones, they tried mating hummingbirds with ping pong balls. <laughs> which were way better than you would think. Uh, still not good enough to use though, especially after Peter got involved. Uh, what they settled on was a dude in gold shorts. <laughs> with, uh, with a tennis ball hanging off his butt, like a tail. And uh, if, you, if you stray too far from BYU, usually nothing else. That, that is our snitch. That's what we're chasing after. That's the goal of this game. And just like Harry Potter, the goal of the snitch is to kill you. <laughs> he, uh, he has no rules. He's not actually technically a player, so he can do whatever he wants. He can throw you to the ground. He can get weak at your girlfriend while throwing you to the ground and looking yeah. way better shirtless than you ever will. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what kind of girlfriend wants a guy who gets beat up by Mr. Gold Booty Shorts? <laughs> Not mine. Uh, that's why catching the snitch is the greatest feeling in the world. Uh, I remember once I was playing, the snitch had me by the shoulders, threw me to the ground, and as I fell, I lunged forward, reached up, got the ball off him, and I was like, this one's for you, Dad. <laughs> I, was, I was so excited when I got it. I ran all the way home, which is impressive, because my parents live in Indiana. And, <laughs> and I was like, look, Dad, I, I scored the points. I got the snitch. And he's like, way to earn your juice box, son. <laughs> that, was, that was him straightening out the newspaper, because my dad is from the 50s. <laughs> in, in the end, uh, I ended up leaving Quidditch around the time I, I figured out I wasn't um, athletic enough or cool enough to hang out with a field of absolute nerds. <laughs> and around that time, I was walking in the Wilk and accidentally strayed a little bit too close to the booths. And a beautiful John Denning blindsided me out of nowhere. And he was like, hey, are you sad and want to be funny? And I, at the time, I wasn't quite sure how comedy happened, but I'd rather be safe than sorry.